So now that we have some assets in our asset gallery, let's take a look at how we can actually start building up our scenes and using the layout lop to do so. So to start off here, we are going to need an object to scatter some objects on. So I'll just drop in a grid. I just create a sop create with a grid here. And let's go ahead and just go in here and we'll just scale this up a little bit. So we'll do 100 by 100 and that should be fine. And I'll zoom out here a little bit. So we also need to bring in our layout lop, like I said, to actually start using our asset gallery. So we'll create that. And then we have a bunch of tools in here. So some of these settings, there's, a, there's quite a few settings for some of these. So there's not a whole lot of space in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that little arrow to give us some more space while we're working with our layout lop here. So to actually start working with our layout lop, we need to bring some assets from our asset gallery into our little object pool here. So let's go ahead and select these three and drag those over. And then to actually place them down, we need to select which ones we want to place. So we can just select the different ferns that I got here. Just check those on and then we can use this fill tool see we're set to grid right now. I'm gonna set that just to lasso real quick here and I'll just lasso out a big area. And that's just gonna create us a bunch of our ferns here. So I'm gonna go over the fill and the place tools in a separate video, a little bit more in depth because they are kind of the two more in depth tools. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing to work with when you're first starting out. So I'll cover that a little bit more in depth in a future video, but for now, those are gonna be the two tools that you're gonna to use to place objects in your scene. If we use our place tool here, you can just click and drag, and that will scale up an object to put it in your scene. But I'm not gonna do any more with that. I'll just undo that real quick. So for the delete tool here, and pretty much all of these other tools, we have some options that are gonna be pretty much the same for every single tool. So we have the mode here and we have our radius. So our radius is gonna control our fall off area or our area of effect. And our mode, we either have sphere or we have screen. By default, it'll be set to screen. And let me just reset that back to default. So with the screen mode on, it's gonna be in screen space. So as I zoom in, this is gonna stay the same size as I zoom out. It's also gonna stay the same size. I personally don't really care for this mode that much. Um, just a personal preference for me. I never really liked screen space stuff in any applications that I'm using. So I'm just gonna set this to sphere and then I can scale this down and we just have a sphere, a wireframe in our scene that we can move around and see where our area of effect is going to be. As we click and drag, we're gonna start deleting stuff. So all we're doing is just deleting the points that they're being instanced on. And that's pretty much self-explanatory for the delete tool. Then we also have the nudge tool here. So we, again, we have the screen space or we have a sphere. I'm just gonna set that to our sphere here. And let's go ahead and set this down really, really low. Something like nine will work. Actually, let's drop that down to like three. And with this tool, we have some different settings here. So we have this snap to geometry and we can do assets, all or input. So without this turned on, we're just going to click and drag and we can move objects around in our scene, but they will go below and above our object. So we can move them up or down in our scene and they won't stay stuck on our the objects that we have in our scene, which isn't necessarily what we may want. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that undone. And I'll go back in here and let's go ahead and turn the snap to geometry on. Let's take a look at what we have going on here. So if I click and drag, they're all going to snap together, which is not necessarily what we want. If we switch between these two, you see we get some different things going on. It's kind of snapping to the camera there, which again, also not necessarily what we want. And we can also do snap to all, which again, they're all just snapping together. So this kind of is meant more for like 
moving an object at a time, not necessarily a bunch at a time, if you have the snap to geometry on. So just keep that in mind. But as I drag this around, it is going to stay on our on our grid here. And that's probably going to be what you're wanting for most situations, but you may want to turn that off from time to time. But the tools, all of these tools are a little finicky, so just keep that in mind as you're playing with them. It is going to take some getting used to. Like I said, there are some weird quirks, like with this snap to geometry. If you have a big enough radius, you're going to just snap everything together. There's some little weird quirks like that with most of these tools, and um, it takes a little bit of, of learning to get used to. But let's go ahead and jump over to the Orient tool now. And again, this one has the uh, little weird quirks with it as well. So go back to our brush here. We have two different settings here. So we have a soft radius and our overall radius. The soft radius is just going to be our fall off basically. So as I click and drag here, let's go ahead and set this to like 30. So as I click and drag, you're gonna see that as I get closer and closer to the center of our sphere here, it's going to orient more and more towards that 30 degree rotation. But it's never gonna go past that 30 degree rotation, which is a little weird when you're first you know, messing with it, but it makes a little bit more sense as we start to take a look at our other settings here. So if I go ahead and override, click off that override, Basically that override is just gonna say, hey, you're gonna set it to something below 30 degrees and it's rotation value for whatever you have set, no matter what. Now, if we wanna continuously rotate something, we have to uncheck that override and now we can click and drag and it's gonna continuously rotate it around. So you may wanna set that something lower like two and you can slowly rotate objects around as you click and drag, you kinda of get better control over what their orientation is going to look like. So a little bit weird, and then we have this apply once. I'll just set this back to 30. So if I have that set on and I don't have the override checked, as I click and drag here, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to, or continuously do anything, I should say. It's just going to set it to that 30 degree rotation. So you can keep clicking and it's gonna increment that in a 30 degree interval. So that may be what you're looking for as well. Just kind of depends on the situation. And like I said, we have the place tool um, and I'll be covering this one a little bit more in depth along with the fill tool in a, another video because they are more complex and the settings are a little bit weird when you're trying to put objects down in a specific way. But you can just select that and then click and drag objects into your scene. It's kind of the essentials of that tool, kind of rotate around and get your orientation just the way that you want. So that's gonna be more for like one by one assets, kind of your, your bigger main or assets in your scene, whereas the fill is gonna be just filling a bunch of objects into your scene. But let's go ahead and jump to the scale here as well. Again, we have this radius with the soft radius, and of course we have our screen space as well if we want that. But we also have very similar settings to our orient tool here. So we have our override, and then we have a uniform scale or a scale in each direction along with our apply once. So just like our orient, if we click and drag here, it's going to just scale between the default of one and our 1.1. Let's set this to 1.5 here, just a little bit better, see what's going on. So it's going to Go between 1 and 1.5 if we have this override on. If we uncheck that, we can go ahead. I'm just going to set that back down for the moment. So we'll get out of hand really, really quickly here. As we click and drag with the override checked off, we can slowly scale things up if that's what we're looking to do in our scene. And again, if we just want to apply that once and incrementally make things larger, as I click and drag, it's not going to do anything more than that 1.1, we'll have to click again to continuously scale it up. So some little weird quirks for all of these tools, but once you get used to them, they start making a little bit more sense. Not my favorite implementation for these types of tools. I think there's a, there's a bunch of other programs that kind of do it a little bit better. 
um, a little bit better solutions, but you can go and make your own tools if you would like your own brushes. So it is a little bit more complex to do that. I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know what other tools I would make. So if there's a tool that you're looking to try to create, leave it in the comments below and I will see if maybe I can uh, figure it out on my own. Uh, these things are a little bit more complex, but I could see definitely in certain circumstances where you could want some, you know, finer control on some things. So create your own little tools for each, you know, circumstance that you come across. So absolutely something that you can do. Just going to take some time to develop. Uh, but there are some things about these other tools that I don't like. So I might go into and look at how I can create better solutions for some of the, the things that I don't really like. So if there's any questions that you guys have, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. But anyways, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over stuff inside of Houdini as well as Clarice. I have some stuff on Redshift and Cinema 4D and Octane as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.